presenting Orson Welles as the third man. The lives of Harry Lyme, the fabulous stories of the immortal character, originally created in the story The Third Man, with zither music by Anton Karras. I don't know if you know the Republic of San Marino. It's one of the smallest countries in the world, right up on a mountaintop in Italy. It has its own frontier and its own laws. Some people find that a convenience. For instance, if you have to be wanted by the Italian police, they can't come into San Marino and get you. Now, I wasn't exactly in San Marino one particular Wednesday, but I wasn't far away, about 20 miles away, down in the Italian town of Rimini at the bar of my hotel. The Lido Adriatico, right on the beach. Mario, the bartender there, makes as good a Tom Collins as anybody this side of the States. And I was just about at the bottom of my glass when a peculiar little character sidled up to me. He had pop eyes like the ends of hard-boiled eggs and a couple of shaky hands he kept laced together across his chest most of the time. This wasn't enough to make me think he was a little less than legitimate. I'd have caught on from the quick way he pounced on the shell of fruit I'd taken out of my Tom Collins glass and put on the ashtray. Lime, he said. Now, what does this lime rind make me think of, senor? Could it have anything to do with you? He said he was a fortune teller, and that was how he began his pitch. I gave him a thousand lira, and he went on. He didn't do such a job, except that just toward the end, he made one big mistake. mentioned the blue caribou. He got to that after two or three minutes. At the start, he sat holding the lime rind for my Tom Collins. And the way he popped his eyes at it, you'd think he was trying to read my fortune in the feeds. All right, I told him, you're on the right track with that lime rind. Stop gazing at it and put it down. Signore? Put it down. My name's Lime, Harry Lime. My guess is you knew that. No, no, signore, but the psychic uh, Of course, power. the psychic power. But uh, now that we're getting acquainted, what's your name? Oh, Pietro, signore. Is that all just Pietro? It is how I'm known. Okay, Pietro, we'll let it go at that. I gave you a thousand dollars to tell my fortune, so far you've only told me my name. I knew that already. Signore, if you will let me look at the palm of your hand. Why not? Grazie, signore. The lifeline of your hand and the love line, they cross. Uh, just once, old man? Tomorrow, signore, you will receive a letter from a lady. It will come to the desk here in the hotel. Go on, this interests me very much. I see her. She's beautiful. Very beautiful. Mm, better and better. She's looking for something. She's searching. A caribou. What, what, what? Wait a minute. What did you say? A caribou. I know. It's a kind of deer. A very large one. She looks for it in Rimini. The caribou is blue, signor. Uh, you know, I should have guessed that myself. You joke with me. But the caribou, it is blue. Tomorrow, Wednesday, you will receive a letter from a lady. She will ask you to meet her. She will offer you money. Accept, signore. It will bring you fortune. The lady's name? I must summon the psychic power. Uh, might the name by any chance be Jennifer Chase? Signore. How can you know that? Look here, old man. You don't put on a bad performance, but you're making one big mistake. I do not understand, senor. You tell me I'm going to get a letter from a beautiful woman tomorrow, Wednesday. You read that in my future. That's right. Your crystal ball's all right, Pietro, but your calendar's a little out of whack. What? What day of the week do you think this is? It is Tuesday, senor. I thought that's what you thought. It just happens to be Wednesday, old man. 
You're a day behind the times, Pietro, and these days that won't do. Things happen too fast. That letter from the beautiful lady reached me this morning at the hotel desk, just as you said. Uh, ciao, Pietro. I'll be on my way to meet Jennifer Chase now. I wouldn't want to be late. <laughs> Ciao. Ciao. That uh, ciao is the Italian way of saying so long. But to my American stomach, it had another meaning. Food. That was all right, because Jennifer Chase had suggested in her letter we meet for supper, a little pizza place I knew about up in the town. So I left Pietro, consulting his own future. Would Jennifer Chase pay him or not, now that he boggled his job? I walked back from the beach and across the railroad tracks and into the middle of the town. Jennifer Chase had feathery blonde hair and blue eyes and a curtained off booth reserved for us at the back of the pizza restaurant and a sense of the humorous side of the grotesque. <laughs> that poor, poor little man. How sad and funny he must have looked when you told him it wasn't Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, you could see the light going out of his eyes at a hundred lira a minute. Of course I'll pay him anyhow. He's... Served his purpose. Which was exactly what? To get you to come here and meet me. Hmm? I didn't know if just the letter alone would do. I knew Harry Lyme was a man of imagination. I thought you might be intrigued. Were you intrigued? Uh, no, I am now. Oh, with me, you mean. That's what I mean. You're very generous. I'm only trying to set the right example. Um, for the time being, we'll uh, keep to a business basis. Five hundred dollars or two thousand Swiss francs, whichever I prefer, as you said in your letter. It works out to the same figure in either case. I have a bank account in Zurich. Good. Then you'll help me. I didn't say that. But you must. Who else in Rimini can? Something very valuable's been stolen from me. Go to the police. It won't cost you a thing. I can't. I really can't. Oh, don't joke about it. I might be extremely sorry if I went to the police and... Well, when I heard you were in Rimini, then I thought, Harry Lyme is the man to help me. Mm. You see, I know about you. Uh, tell me a few things about you. If you want me to help you, honey? Uh, yes. I'm from New York. So she talked for a while. She's a girl from New York. She's been in Italy about a month. When I asked her what it was that had been stolen from her, she wanted me to recover. She said it was a blue caribou. Blue caribou stolen from her in a back street in Rimini. Oh, please don't laugh. You see, I buy antiques and art objects for, for a firm in New York. Mm. And the blue caribou is the finest antique pottery piece I've ever seen. Oh, so that was it, an antique pottery piece. <laughs> it was stolen from you. Well, how did you get it in the first place? Have you ever noticed the antique shop on the main piazza? Mm. Sure, it's full of junk. Phony, cop of the month, stuff like that. I know the place. Yeah, I went in there. As you say, the wares are worthless, but while I was there, a customer came in. A large, fat man. Well, you seem to remember him very well. Well, I saw him once again. He came into the shop, and the clerk showed him a pottery piece. I heard the price mentioned. It wasn't a thirtieth part of what the piece was worth. In that crummy little shop, they had a piece worth thousands of dollars, and it went to the fat man for a few thousand lira. Was well, that the blue caribou? No, but there was a companion piece, and that was the blue caribou. So you saw your chance and bought it, hmm? Mm hmm I offered the same amount of money the fat man had just paid. Well, the clerk hesitated, but then he sold me the blue caribou. I was walking back to my hotel at the beach, and in a side street, the large fat man knocked against me and took the caribou. Oh, well, let's finish supper and then retrace your steps, hmm? That's the way to begin. Do you think we'll get anywhere? Well, we might, we might, if we retrace your steps far enough. He said you were walking out to the beach. The moon ought to be up out there. You know, it's one of the nicest beaches on the Adriatic. Oh, Harry. Shouldn't we think about the blue caribou? Should we? No. No. That moon was all right. Mm. Jen was all right, too. There's only one thing wrong. A shadow. We ought to have had two shadows, and even if we were standing too close together for that, the shadow shouldn't have been so short and small. 
When the moonlight caught it in a certain way, there shouldn't have been that glint from two hard-boiled egg and eyes. I took Jan into a hotel and said good night. There was always tomorrow. Then I went back out on the sidewalk, strolled along the beach, not a care in the world. All right, Rosebud, what do you want? My name is Pietro. Yes, I know, the fortune teller who can tell you tonight what's going to happen this morning. Well, what do you think's going to happen now, Don't fortune me, teller? Senor. You know, you oughtn't to follow people around at night. It makes you nervous. It's, it's for money. Well, listen, you're going to pay me my money. <laughs> All right, Pietro. So that's it. Well, she said she would. Maybe she will. How'd you like to make some money now, Pietro? Thank you very much, Signore. You know the antique shop on the main piazza? I... I know it. Tell me all you know about it. If you know anything, well, there's a couple of thousand lira in it for you. No. No. I can tell you nothing. He ran off as if his life were at stake. What was it all about? What was wrong about that antique shop on the Rimini main piazza? I stood there a while. Just me and the Adriatic. But after half an hour, I didn't know any more than I had before. A large, fat man had stolen a blue caribou and melted into the Italian crowd. That seemed to be it. I decided to see if I couldn't help Jen out. Besides, 2,000 Swiss francs in my bank in Zurich could help me out. So in the morning, I dropped into the antique shop on the main piazza up in town. May I help you, sir? No, oh, you speak English. I judge from your appearance you're an American. What about yourself? International, sir. No nationality. No? Not anymore. I use the name of Condon. Or condoni, if you like the Italian style. Condoni, condoni. I doubt if you've ever heard of it before. Uh, now, uh, may I help you? Well, if you don't mind my saying so, you're not, uh, uh, to use your phrase, quite what I'd expect in the style of an Italian sales clerk. No. But I am simply not the sales clerk. Oh, no? No, I, I'm the shop manager. Owner manager? Unfortunately not. But since you're an American, the name of the owner will very likely surprise you. Try me. Louis de Julia. Are you surprised? Oh, I'm sorry to say I'm not. The name means nothing to you? Then you're a very sheltered American. Yes, I've been abroad a long time. No right. doubt that explains it. Now, may I help you? I bought a piece of bric-a-brac and left the shop, but the plot had thickened, as is sometimes said. I knew the name Louis de Julio, all right, but after all, who doesn't? He used to be the head of the rackets in New York. District attorney couldn't seem to prove any of the things every schoolboy knew, but Louis wasn't a citizen, and they deported him. Then he got in trouble with the Italian police, and I heard he was living in San Marino. On the street there in Rimini, I could just about see the little Republic of San Marino on its mountaintop, 20 miles away. <laughs> In a moment, Orson Welles returns as Harry Lyme, the third man. Oh, why? Well, if I hadn't lost the caribou, I never would have met you. Well, I'm glad I met you, too. Why? Oh, well, thousands of reasons. Two thousand. Let's forget money. Well, perhaps let's not forget it, but just mislay it for an hour or so anyway. Hmm? All right, Harry. See that man over there? Where? Just by the waiter. Came in a few minutes after us. He hasn't stopped watching us since then. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's come up here to admire the view. Oh, no, let's forget him, Harry. Together with everything else, that's unpleasant. 
Let's have another bottle of wine. I'm beginning to enjoy myself. So we sat there and admired the view. It was late when we finally left. The character who had been watching us all evening disappeared into the dark just ahead of us as we walked out of the restaurant. I made inquiries and found we'd missed the last bus back to Rimini. What do we do now, Harry? Stay here for the night. Yes, there's several hotels. One for you and one for me. Couldn't think of a better arrangement. Where do we go from here, Harry? Well, to your hotel, I suppose. So we walked down the street. Jenny checked into her hotel before she went upstairs. We had a nightcap together. I can't help wondering about that man who was watching us in the restaurant, Harry. Oh, I shouldn't bother about him. It's fairly obvious why he was there. Why, Harry? Well, like most fairy stories, the good and the bad fairies are there to keep an eye on the other characters just to make sure they go where the plot directs them. Otherwise, there'd be no end to the story. And you mean we were both meant to come here, to San Marino, to find... Perhaps the blue caribou. Maybe the end of the story. Maybe you're right. Oh, it's getting very late. Good night, Harry. And thanks for a wonderful evening. Yes, it had been a wonderful evening. It wasn't over yet. I kissed Jenny good night, walked out of her hotel and down the street to the place where I was staying. My footsteps rang out in the empty street couldn't help feeling that the echo of my footsteps was a little more substantial than an echo ought to be. I went upstairs, opened the door, switched on the light, and found that although I'd booked a single room, I had company. A large, fat man. Oh, hello. Are we sharing this room? Thought I'd rented it all for myself. It is not necessary to be funny. Oh, it's pleasant, sir. Don't you think so? There's no need to stand there holding that heavy revolver, old man. You look uncomfortable. Take it easy and sit down. Hmm? I have a message. Louis de Giulio says to get out of San Marino. He says to get out of Italy. You work for him? That's right. All right, but I can't go till morning. <laughs> Isn't any bus. Hire a car. So long. Ciao, old man. He was a gentleman of few words, but he said a lot. I phoned Jennifer to be ready, and then I went out into the streets to see if I could hire a car. I didn't have the hotel porter to get one for me, see. I'd asked one or two people, and it hadn't been hard to find out where Louis de Giulio lived. He was the most famous man at San Marino, and the place wasn't big. As luck would have it, I hadn't walked long when I was in front of his house. And again, as luck would have it. I walked up his front steps. My name's Harry Lyme. Okay, come in. You're expecting me? No, but I've heard of you. Sit down in here. What's on your mind? Drink? I got good scotch. All right, fine. Say, you're in a lot more hospitable mood than your henchman, old man. Henchman? I haven't got any henchman. That's finished, washed up. I'm a peaceful San Marino citizen. Here, this'll do you. Thanks. Well, that's all over. No henchman, no nothing. Got an antique shop down in Rimini, old man? Oh, I gotta live. Brings in peanuts. You looked in down there? Only today I met a fellow named uh, Condon or Condoni, something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's what he calls himself. Real name something Bulgarian or Polish. He runs a place for me. I can't go down there myself. The minute I'm out of San Marino, the Italian cops will get me. And uh, the large, fat man? Who's he? I don't know any large, fat man. Everybody knows a large, fat man. Your tone said something special. Well, old man, you're right. I mean the one you sent over to my hotel tonight to tell me to get out of San Marino. Get out of Italy. Who's now, that? listen. You're Harry Lyme, and I've heard talk about you, so I asked you to have a drink. But I don't know any large, fat man. And I haven't got any hints. And you didn't send anybody to my hotel. You're learning it, Lyme? That's right. Well, thanks for the drink. I was just looking around to see if I couldn't hire a car. I've gone away believing bad things of Louis de Julio. That he told lies, for instance. If it hadn't been that just then a large, fat man came in. Louis must have left the front door unlocked. That was careless of Louis. I followed you here, Lime. Who? Keep your mouth shut, whoever you are. I told you, Lime. 
Did Julio tell you to get out of the country? You work for him? You know him? I work for him. I know him. And who do you think this fellow is right here beside me? Louis, if I were you, I'd plug this large, fat man. He goes around misrepresenting you. It's bad for your reputation. No, but I can't plug him. You, mean you haven't got a gun? I got one. I always carry one. But I don't want to get into trouble with San Marino. This is the last country I've got left. Louis, if an outlaw like you doesn't know the law, who does? A man's home is his castle in any country. This man's guilty of breaking and entering. You've got a right to defend yourself. You're right. I'll knock over this lamp. Now, oh, that draws his fire in the dark. Aim for the flashes, Louis. Well, did you learn it by correspondence? Shall I tell you the truth? And tell me a lie. They're usually nice. I'll tell you the truth. You're the icing on this cakewalk, hmm? You're nice. <laughs> nice in the dialogue, honey. I wouldn't have guessed it from what I'd heard about you. What did you hear? That you were... <laughs> well... The upper crust of the underworld. <laughs> Something <laughs> like that. Oh, I didn't want to go to the police about the stolen caribou. I was afraid there was something wrong in such a valuable piece being sold so cheap. Oh, very likely there was, honey. And I was afraid that if there was a police investigation, I might never get the caribou back. Mm. So I turned to you. And you haven't got the caribou back. No. Let's go outside. Whatever else happens here in Remini, the moon goes on. Nice idea, this hotel veranda. Dark and all trellised with vines. Harry. Very romantic, hmm? What did the Rimini police say this afternoon? Well, the same as the San Marino police last night after the shooting. The corpus delecti was incognitus. That is, if uh, he had a passport, he buried it someplace. They didn't even know who he was? Well, some name or other on some papers in this hotel room down here in Rimini probably assumed no blue caribou on the premises, which is the... Uh, Hurtful part of the whole But he thing. did take it from me. Probably passed it on to somebody else. Oh, I so hate to lose it. I so hate to lose 2,000 francs, but I'm getting it back for you, honey. So we console each other. Harry, you kiss as nicely as you dance. Harry. Mm -hmm. What is it? Down there below on the veranda, on the lawn, do you see him? Now, why is it every time we get close enough together that one shadow appears? Pietro! Pietro! No, don't run off. Come on up here. That steps at the side. It's that sad, funny little man. Yeah. What do you suppose he wants? You paid him yet for that poor-up fortune telling the other night? No. No, I haven't seen him. Then I suppose that's what he wants. <laughs> and it was. Jennifer paid him. But when I convinced him Louis de Julio was a peaceful San Marino citizen now, he was willing to take some money for something else. You see, when I'd asked him about the antique shop on the Rimini main piazza, the time before, he'd run off because he was afraid of anything having to do with de Julio. Now he took a couple of thousand liras in those nervous hands of his. And he said, he said one very interesting thing. Condoni, he who manages the antique shop? Mm. It is said he has no friends. He lives alone. But I have seen him sometimes. Yes, I have seen him with a large, fat man. Harry Lyme returns in just a moment. And now... Harry Lyme. Well, before the antique shop opened the next morning, I placed that name, Condoni. Because after the war, there was an Italian syndicate that made up phony American cigarettes in Lisbon and put them on the transatlantic planes for Italy as if they were being flown from the States. Those cigarettes got good prices in the Italian black market. One of those who lined his pockets, I heard, was a certain condone. I dropped in on him, and what with one thing and another, he thought it best to produce the blue caribou from the back of the shop. He discovered some valuable pieces in the job lots of cheap stuff he was selling for Louis de Julio, and instead of pinching them outright because he was scared of Louis, he was selling them for a song to a friend of his, a large, fat man. Jennifer had walked in at just the wrong moment, at the right moment from her point of view, as it finally turned out, because she got her blue caribou. Condoni? 
Well, I told him what he told the large fat man to tell me to get out of Italy. Why not give Louis de Julia a little help straightening his life out up there on the mountaintop of San Marino? Jen and I found time for a little skiing in Switzerland. The season was just turning. It was fine up there. And that bit into my 2,000 Swiss francs. But when it was over, I had a few francs left. And my memories. I guess Jen had memories, too. And a blue caribou. 